Hi, good morning. Well, it's not actually raining today in Manchester, so let's just hope it keeps that way until the weekend. Yes, I'm wearing my glasses today. That's because I've got some books to show you. Um, well, magazines and... Oh, excuse me while I get my hanky. I seem to have developed a runny nose just in time for the weekend. Remind me, that's where I put my hanky. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so that's why I put the glasses on because I've got some magazines to show you. They're actually reading glasses, so I'm not actually seeing you very well, but you'll have to excuse me. I'm sure you're there. Hi. <laughs> I've been working hard all week to finish off a sweater. It still needs blocking because the bands are curling a little bit, but this is an order. And uh, as I said, excuse the curly bands. So I've been working like crazy to finish it off, um, to get it put on Etsy for the person who's ordered it. Uh, so if you're watching, person who ordered it, <laughs> it will be with you very soon. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, the glasses. The new glasses and they're actually sort of <laughs> a bit slidey. They need adjusting on the ears. Um, that's what I've been doing basically. I've been rushing through um, the, uh, the the cardigan because it's getting near to Christmas and I need to start the Christmas things, you know, for my nieces and stuff like that. And also I wanted to fit a few small items in, you know, for Etsy. And uh, well, thank you very much to the two people who bought shawls from me. Very much appreciated. I hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. Um, so that, that was a, a nice boost <laughs> just before I was going um, to the crochet meetup. That was a lovely boost, thank you very much. And thank you to Ruth who sent me these gorgeous, well not these, this gorgeous necklace which matches what I'm sort of wearing today. <laughs> um, Sue and uh, Christina came yesterday but we were that busy yapping and talking about things and that that when it was time to make a video Christina had to go and <laughs> Sue followed very shortly afterwards so sorry people I'm hoping to remember to take the camera with me when we have the meet up on Saturday so you will get to see um, the people who are there hopefully hopefully you know I forget who I am and just so people who want to turn up who haven't said they're going to turn up that we will be floating about Manchester somewhere and if you spot this t-shirt you'll know it's me this was made for me by my lovely friend Sarah and uh, so you'll know who I am if you see this t-shirt walking anywhere around Manchester say hi yeah so there you go <laughs> oh dear we haven't decided as yet where we're going to be most of the time, but uh, I'm sure there will be coffee shops involved. So if you're looking around the Arndale Centre and you see a Costa, we could be in there. <laughs> but I believe there's three, so I haven't quite found out which one of the three we're going to be in. Um, so that should be interesting for me. I'll no doubt find that out because we've all got contact with each other by phones, etc. So we should be. You know, saying, where are you? <laughs> and because I live in Manchester, everybody's presuming I know where everything is. And I actually don't. Because I very, very seldom go into Manchester. So all of you strangers that are coming in from other parts, um, don't ask me for instructions because I am no help. Right, I've got two magazines that I bought actually uh, last weekend. As you know, I haven't made a video since. It's very remiss of me because I usually make videos in between, but uh, there we are. I've got two crochet magazines that both came with uh, additions. But as usual, once you've ripped the um, paperwork off, the cellophane off, you can't remember which bits of the free things came with which magazine. So I'm thinking that that came with the crochet the inside crochet although it doesn't say uh it just says it's this is what, from where she got spinners so i think it came with the inside crochet magazine which is 
issue 95 and if you're watching Karen apologies because I still haven't uh, sorted out the magazines for you yet <laughs> I've been busy 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 I don't know how I ever found time to do anything when I was working because since I've been retired my days are just jam-packed and uh, you know I'm like oh blimey is it Thursday already you know it's just frightening it's scary when you get to almost 72 the years are whistling past me and I'm thinking whoa <laughs> hold on a bit I'm sure the year had more days in it than it does now anyway here we are with the inside crochet magazine I'll skip past the adverts for different things and who does what and who does when. Um, there's a new book apparently called Granny Square's Home, which I really can't can't have any more books. I'm just oh, I've had a book on back order from Amazon for so long I forgot what I ordered, but it keeps telling me it's it's coming soon. <laughs> That's from the loop. Um, it's I think it's in London loop. Loopknitting.com. Yes, Islington, London, and it's showing that the latest, you know, dyed thing that goes like with the geranium. I'm looking forward to going into the uh, Countess of Blaze, and I'm hoping that she allows me to film in there for you all. Um, you know, you have to ask because it's only polite, isn't it? You can't go in there with your camera blazing, can you? Um, that one is the fireworks cushion, but I'm not sure if you can see it very well. I'm filming in the daylight, but the day is not that bright today, so bear with me, folks. Um, this one says fireside crochet, and I'm sure you're not going to be able to see it very well because I can't. And it's actually a skirt. It's a skirt in red. If that gives you a clue. If your eyes are spinning around the picture. Trying to find what's crochet. That's my pet book with the inside crochet. The photographs are too big. You know too uh, background. You know. See now that's a good photo. That That's what I call a good photo. I can see what it is. And I can see that it's like a cardigan, a sleeveless one. That isn't such a good photo because it's a shawl and you can't quite see it. She's got it all bunched up and her arms stuck in front of it and everything. It might be a very artistic photo, but not very good. And that one is a hat. Now this again, you know... Is it a photograph of the dress? Is it a photograph of the caravan? No, it's a photograph of the bag. So, you know, very artistic photo, but not quite what I was looking for. The same with that one again, very artistic photograph, but it's actually just for the bag. You see, they get it right with some of the photos. You know, they do. That's uh, granny squares or whatever you want to call it. These are just a selection of yarn bowls. I've never had a yarn bowl. I've never really felt the urge really because they're so expensive and um, they look as though they're meant more for hand rolled bowls, you know, rather than yarn balls, which I, I crochet from the inside of a yarn bowl. Sorry, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> they're reading glasses, so I can't see you. Um, they're just quite expensive. I mean, they're very, very pretty, all these yarn bowls, but I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I haven't answered any of your comments. I, I, oh, there are so many of them. Thank you very, very much. I've read them all, but I haven't got round to answering them all. Um, and to the people who, <laughs> Edith especially, who said, when I said, what are you crocheting? What are you knitting? Hold it up. She was actually holding up a scarf ready to measure it at the same time as I said that. <laughs> See, I have got x-ray eyes. <laughs> these are for the kids. These are that's a mushroom. I think it opens up. Um, there's a fox hat and... Uh, no, fox hat's this side. <laughs> and that's a little boat. 
I believe like the toadstool opens up. I'm not sure what it opens up into. I think it tells you further in. Uh, those are lovely fingerless mittens. And I think there's a there's a cowl and a waistcoat. I don't think I would ever crochet around a tea light. I don't know why I'm scared of crocheting around things that have heat, you know? Um, maybe it's just me. I'm always frightened of setting things on fire. Um, more cushions, a pot holder or whatever you want to call it, a doily. This is just what it, what's in it. Yeah, the Sienna kimono. That's a, another picture of the of the kimono. Although I like granny squares, uh, that's a little open. I think I've told you before. I hang myself up on every doorknob, the knocker that goes. You know, anything that sticks out, I get hooked up on it. I love things with fringe on, but I get hooked up on everything, every door handle going past. That's a better picture of the skirt. The one I was saying, you can't tell what it is. It's a red skirt. That's it. That's a red skirt. Uh, the cocoon cardigan, I do like that. Uh, that's the short sleeve cardigan that I showed you before. It's um, done in Lang Amira cotton. The only thing about English books is, you know, when you have American magazines, they have a letter three or a two or four next to the, um, you know, the thickness of the yarn. UK don't. They just tell you what the yarn is, but they don't say, oh, it's a double net. Oh, yeah, I do beg your pardon. It does say here, you can use any worsted yarn to achieve a similar effect. Now that's very good saying that because really in the UK we don't really have worsted yarn so it's probably an American um, designer who's been adapted for the English. Um, that's a Rene waistcoat. Rene. It always reminds me, if you live in England, it always reminds me of the, uh, the comedy series called Hello Hello. Yeah. Oh, Rene. <laughs> That was the name of the uh, cafe owner. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, whether it's Cloud or Clyde or a hat. I'm not very good with pronunciation when it's not in English. That's another picture of the shawl. Sue quite liked the diagram of the shawl, but she didn't actually like the colours that we used in that, but I'm sure something will emerge from Sue at some stage. Yeah. That's the corner to corner cushions. I think I've mentioned before I don't make uh, crochet cushions or throws because I've always had, well not always had, I've always had an animal of some description, either a cat or a dog, and they tend to get their feet in them and they pull at them. So it's uh, just not a very good idea. I don't know why that's called granola. Because granola to me always reminds me of those breakfast bars you have. And uh, origami pot holders, which are very pretty. I once made some crochet um, mats, you know, to put your glasses on. But every time I put anything down on it, like a glass, it tipped over. So I'd, I've given up with the crochet ones. I've just gone back to, you know, the ordinary. Uh, I've got stone ones, I think. They're made out of like a carved bit of stone at the moment. And I've got some glass ones. Uh, yeah, that's Captain Ahab and Moby Dick. And that's the broomstick candle cosy. I do like those, like I said, the Hawthorn wrist warmers. Whether I would make them? They've got the dreaded bubbles on. I don't know. <laughs> so I think that's, oh, that's uh, showing you the Ladybird Cottage. It does open up. So like a hidey hole or something or other. Um, I suppose it's like a little trinket box, isn't it? 
And I am going to sneeze in a moment. Picture perfect blanket. It's for kiddies. It's got a, a duck and a bear and a flower. I think it's a sheep. There's a fish as well. I've never done this corner to corner. I know I'm slow to the party. Oh, there's a picture of all the different squares. Whenever there's a trend going on, I'm always very slow to the party, if you know what I mean. I didn't make a virus shawl until every man and his cat had made one. <laughs> and I've never made a corner to corner, anything. Yeah, that's the fox hat. Uh, so that's the end of this book. It's just the how-tos again as usual. How to crochet, how to do this. Which is included in every magazine, it seems to me. Um, that's just an advert for Stylecraft. I presume you get the pattern from Stylecraft. So that's it for that one. And I think this was the magazine that came with it. It's from uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. Um, just telling you all about the yarn. That one is knitted, I think. Oh, well, it's crochet. It looks knitted, actually, but it's it is crochet. I was looking at the ribbon. The ribbon looks knitted. Done in four ply, which is your favourite if you're in America. Um, poncho. I've not made a poncho for myself. I've only ever made uh, like a short shoulder one. A uh, sweet shop polka blanket. Morning Song, a baby set. Oh, that's so sweet. Heather the Lucky Sheep. I don't make things like this, but I do love them, you know. But you should hold your hand up at what you're good at and what you're absolutely rubbish at. And I am absolutely rubbish at anything with a face. Anything that needs stuff in with a face, yeah. Now I like that, that's pretty. I mean, I know it's only plain, um, but it's just got the colours around the edge that just livens it up, doesn't it? I can see me making that one. And that's a, a sort of shawl neck. Not really a waistcoat, is it? It's sort of like a jacket without sleeves. <laughs> so we'll see. And that's crochet essentials again, showing you how to do, what to do, etc. etc. So yeah, that's I like the shawl in that one. Right, this one is the one that came with more um, bits and pieces to it. This one's called Crochet Now. Um, it's issue 21. And it says, all you want for Christmas. Well, I don't think there's a dishwasher in here or anything like that, is there? <laughs> all I want for Christmas, but I won't get. <laughs> Unless there's a fairy godfather out there somewhere. I would like a dishwasher, because I am just anti washing dishes. I'm actually anti-ironing uh, as well, but that's by the, by the by. Oh, these look like new patterns from Serdar. They're not in the magazine, obviously, because they're new patterns from Serdar. Quite intriguing. I mean, I quite like that cardigan, but with the ruffles, with having a big bosom, you know, you're never quite sure where they're going to land, are you? But I do like the sweaters, if you can see them. They're quite small photos, so... I don't know whether you can focus your eyeballs on them. Um, that's quite pretty, isn't it? 
it's an advert again for West Yorkshire Spinners, but the colours of that are gorgeous. So looking forward to going to this Countess of Lays. See what they've got with the hand dyed. Oh, that's an article about Yarndale that Sue and I missed going to. We're going to pencil it into our diaries for next year here. Um, I think, again, that's another advert. I don't think it's the pattern that's in the magazine. Noel. Pine tree cocoon cardigan. It's done in the, you know, the... Well, it isn't so much the, sh the graduated yarn as more like long long it's short gradient isn't it or long fleck whichever way you want to look at it um that's a snuggly penguin jumper for a baby well little one it goes two to three up to seven to eight mm -hmm. Um, well, that's an article about the lady who designed the, um, I think that was in the other book, wasn't it? The Nowhere in the Way of Bit, or whatever it was called. Yeah, I think he was in the, the pattern for that was in the other book. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Dorothy and Toto. That's Dorothy. Not sure where Toto is. That's Toto is the little dog she's carrying in the basket. That's quite pretty. Plum pine cone hat and cowl. It's done in double knit. It's actually done in blue face Leicester, but uh, I would never stop itching. I had a lovely lime green cardigan on the other day. And I don't know why, but every time I see it in my wardrobe, I think, oh, why don't I wear that? And then I put it on yesterday, the day before, and I itched myself stupid. It's only got a very small percentage of wool in it, but oh gosh, it drove me insane. I had to take it off in the end. I like, yeah, I like it. I like the design. I like the colour. I like everything. I'm going to have to do another one, but not with nothing with wool. In. It's obviously got some percentage of wool in, and it's driving me loopy. Um, ethical place settings. Toft talk. Bryn, the Welsh mountain sheep. There he is. He's cute. <laughs> that reminds me of Zoe, 24 karat crochet, with the hot water bottle covers. <laughs> I don't use a hot water bottle. I use, uh, you know, those beanbag things that you warm up. Christmas elves. Better hurry up and get this pattern down to Karen if she wants to make a Christmas elf. I just really haven't had five minutes to go through the patterns and take out what, you know, what I, uh, I'm going to see. <laughs> if I'm getting a cold before the weekend, I'm going to go mad. I don't get colds. I never have colds. Yeah, I really do feel as though I'm getting one. Right, Christmas tree mittens, a bit strange looking, aren't they? Not sure I'd want Christmas trees on the end of my hands, but whatever floats your boat. Oh, that's telling you how to do bead crochet. A pinwheel handbag. Um, that's just talking about different granny squares. Can't really show the you because the pattern's really next to it, so sorry about that, people. Emerald opulence. Yes, the 
free gift does come with this because that's the free gift which is a hexagonal blocking board so I've now got a hexagonal blocking board which I won't be using Karen uh, and I've also got um, somewhere a square blocking board which I won't be using either Karen <laughs> it's amazing what's going to wind its way down to you girl <laughs> Fifi the fairy. I'm not anti amigurumi, but slowly they're taking over the magazines. And when you don't crochet amigurumis, it's got a not a bit annoying, but you know, I don't mind the odd one or two. They should make a proper amigurumi crochet book, and then people could decide whether they want to buy it or they don't. Yeah. Uh, Mulberry Street Ripple Africa. It's just when I open up a magazine that I've paid like six, seven pounds for or something, and every other pack with an amigurumi, it's a bit annoying, really. But never mind, that's just my pet peeve. Helibor Boot Cuff. I keep saying I'm going to make some leg warmers. I don't mean to wear like over my trousers or anything like that to put them on underneath because when I'm on my scooter my legs get very cold because the other wind blows towards you. Um, herringbone cushion cover. I mean I have got my long boots, the black ones with the red roses embroidered on them which are very very lovely but they take ages to get them on. So. That's James C. Brett again. It's nothing to do with the magazine. It's just adverts. And then there's some face cloths, dish cloths, whatever you want to call them, wash cloths on that side. I do love my wash cloths drumming crochet. And that's the wool shop called the Y Wools in Derbyshire. They do a little... Um, Call them like a cameo, whatever. Then you've got the how to's again, which is how to crochet, how to do this, how to do that. And then I do like those arm warmers, which would be a good stash buster. You can see them, oh, can't see them very well, can you? I'm that busy trying to cover up the instructions. There they are, they're sort of like a sort of a V stitch, I think. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Right, let's look what came with it free. Well, what came with it free was the little pin thing. And then there's also this hexagonal blanket. Uh, which shows you the blocking board and how to use it and everything like that. And, um, you know, what are hexagonals to do with it. As I do not make afghans, as you know, this will probably be another one that's wended its way down to you, Karen. <laughs> There's loads of the things, loads of them. You don't need to make an afghan, you can make a baby blanket or something. And if you follow Karen, which is casualistic, she does an awful lot for charity, which is why I send her down anything I don't use, you know, uh, because she subscribes to a few charities, one of which is Woolly Hugs, and um, she makes a lot of toys, blankets, baby hats, whatever, um, to send to them. I never have time to do things for charity, so my way of doing things is to either send down patterns I don't want, or I've got another friend who makes uh, premature baby blankets, I hand her stuff over, and she's also been making hats for the homeless. So, <laughs> my contribution is to give them the actual, oh, the face is sticking out on the top, is to give them the actual yarn to, to, to let them do it. So, that's what's been going on. Um, as I say, I'm getting excited now. It's not long. We go at the weekend, we go to this uh, the meetup. It'd be nice to meet some people that I've known for a long time by name, uh, and I've known them on video, you know, if I take my glasses off now that I can see you. Um, these are for close work. 
the class work doesn't involve a camera. Um, so it'd be nice to put a face to people, you know, um, and say hi in person. Um, I think there's probably about 10 people going if everybody turns up. Um, we didn't want to make the group too large because like we're meeting up in public places and uh, it's very difficult to get somewhere, you know, where they'll allow you to just sit there all day and do your crochet. And um, the rooms to hire in Manchester and places like that were just so expensive that, uh, you know, they were out of range really. Um, Oh, my nose. I I do hope this is hay fever and not the start of a cold because it's going to drive me nutty. But I can't take most cold remedies because uh, I'm back on my painkillers now because of my spinal pain situation. And so the most of the, you know, the cough and cold cure things that are on the market, you can't really take because they've got paracetamol in them. And I can't take paracetamol while I'm taking these painkillers because then I would be overdosing myself. Oh, dilemma, dilemma. And I haven't got any lemons. I must get some lemons when I go out so I could have honey and lemon drink. Because um, I like the fresh lemons, you know, not the squirty lemon juice you buy. I prefer the fresh lemons. So I shall get a couple of lemons while I'm out there today. And uh, I only put a bit of alcohol in if it's bedtime. I don't want to be crocheting a wonky line. <laughs> I haven't decided what I'm going to make next, although it probably will be something on the lines of a shawl, wrist warmers, hats and scarves, whatever. Um, I need to start the things for my nieces, but of course you won't be seeing those because just in case they watch the videos, I don't think they do, but can't be too certain can you so uh, they will be my mystery <laughs> crochet along knit along whatever I decide to do so you won't be seeing them at all until after the event so you'll be thinking I'm not doing much won't you <laughs> it's just the way it is I decided to start early you see normally I would start at the beginning of December then it's this mad mad rush to get everything finished so this time I decided I would order the yarn, which has already arrived. I'm not sure any because it's for them. And um, I'll just start doing those in the between, so at least I won't have this big crazy mad rush on just before Christmas. I still can't think about Christmas, and it's only, what, seven weeks away or something like that? Something weird. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, you're all probably really organised. You've probably got all your Christmas presents there in a row, haven't you? And, um, I mean, my niece is like that. She's already asked me what I wanted for Christmas and what I wanted for my birthday. And, and so... She's more organised than I am. She likes shopping in Liverpool for some reason, or that she likes the shopping centre there. I mean, we've got some great shopping centres in Manchester, but they do tend to get very, very crowded and I can't deal with crowds when you're trying to push my wheeler through. I mean, I'm bad. I, couldn't, I mean, Christmas couldn't have happened at worst time because I've not had my injection in my spine yet. So, if, you know, wandering around the shops is just out of it at the moment for me. I'm going to load myself up with painkillers and uh, for the weekend. So if you do see this woman with a t-shirt on saying Urban Gypsy Crochet and wandering around looking a bit dazed, it won't be alcohol. <laughs> It'll be one too many painkillers. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sure I'll be with it on the day. As I say, it'll be alright on the night, don't they? Well, I think that's all I've got to tell you, really. Um, there must be much, much more, because it's over a week since I spoke to you last, so... I feel sure there must be more to talk to you about, but, you know, old age, brain fade, whatever you want to call it. I'll remember as soon as I've put the camera away, uh, I will remember. And I will try to reply to comments. Keep your comments coming, by the way. You will get an answer very shortly. Um, it's just that I read them, but um, I just don't have time to stop and type you an answer. <laughs> um, at the time 
because I've been busy with the cardigan, which done. At least that's done. Because I didn't know whether he wanted it as a gift for Christmas, so I thought I'd better get it out of the way. Um, it's a guy who's ordered it for his mum, so um, which she'll hope she gets it in time. It's dull today. I need to take some photographs to put things on Etsy, like the blue shawl here and the black. Well, I don't know whether it's black or whether it's charcoal grey. The big fluffy um, fringed shawl has to go on there as well. And the hat and scarf set that I did in uh, like a gold colour, that's to go on there as well. So I've got one, two, three, four photos. And possibly more because the ones I took uh, of my sweaters that were like uh, plus sized, they didn't look right on the narrower model. So I need to re-photograph them on, um, you know, the, the, the Rebel or whatever she's called. <laughs> she's still not named. She's still either Rebel or Portly Porsche. She's either one or the other, yeah. I did add a bit more wadding on because Christina brought me some wadding. But she still needs her sleeves padded out uh, um, so as I can display the um, things better. Well, as you've noticed, there's no Gigi today. He probably will be here tomorrow, but um, I won't be making a video tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think unless something wonderful has arrived, which would be highly doubtful because I haven't ordered anything, anything wonderful. I've got no more wool or yarn or anything to arrive. Um, nothing much at all to arrive, really. So, because I'm trying to curb my uh, instinct to spend. I can always tell, I always go, I can't call it depressed, it isn't depressed. Not the way that people who have depression go. I just call it like my birthday winter blues or whatever you want to call it. I just go, um, I don't know, sort of feeling a bit ugh. I think it's all to do with seasons. I've got a satellite, but I always forget to put it on. And it's all to do with my birthday coming up and different things like that. And always round about this time of year, because like I lost my brother two years ago last month, the dog and my cousin. And it's sort of a very depressive kind of time for me. Um, but I don't really have depression. I mean, not when I see people who have depression. Um, so I hesitate to call mine that. It's just winter blues to me. Um, I just don't like dark days, I don't like wet rainy days and everything aches when it's like this kind of weather. I should be like a bird, shouldn't I? I should migrate south for the winter, <laughs> go somewhere warm. <laughs> when I win the lottery, I'm not saying if, I'm going to say when I win the lottery, I will migrate to somewhere warm when it comes to the winter time and then I won't be grumbling and grouching so much. Yeah, because it does have an effect. It was funny when Sue came the other day, we went out on the deck in and the sun came out briefly for not even five minutes. And we were both standing there like giddy on the decking going, the sun, the sun, look at the sun, you know. <laughs> Needless to say it went in, but it was just quite giddy while it was there, you know. I mean, you, you, people who live in really, really hot countries, they say, oh, we'd love your rain. But you wouldn't really, because it's not the rain that bothers me. It's the dark and the damp and the dullness of the day. If it was a bright sunny day with rain, I mean, I know you wouldn't get that, but that would be great. Or even a nice bright day with rain. And in some respects, I would rather have snow, because at least when it's snowing, it's a nice bright day. Rain is just totally ugh, mood altering. And sorry for all you people who are coming up at the weekend. You really need to bring your umbrella because I cannot guarantee that it won't rain. It's Manchester. That's why we don't have wrinkles. <laughs> we live in Manchester where it's damp. <laughs> 
<laughs> we might get fungus growing on us, you know, because of all the dampness and webbed feet, but we don't get wrinkles really because of the weather. It's so wet, it keeps us moist <laughs> and refreshed. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I've got to decide what I'm going to start crocheting next. Um, it'll be something for Etsy. I don't really feel like trawling through patterns looking for things for my nieces at the moment, so I think I'll just settle for starting something for Etsy at the moment, yeah? So I shall speak to you all very soon, and hopefully there will be a video um, on Saturday. Although my editor-in-chief, which is Zoe, um, her um, internet's down at the moment, so she's struggling a bit. So she won't be able to edit this video, so you'll have to get it just as it is. And um, if I take little videos, um, when I'm there on Saturday, they won't get edited together because her internet's not supposed to be mended until Monday. <laughs> it's probably as well she's coming up to Manchester because at least she can use the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I had to smile because she was in at the Starbucks or somewhere she was in there because she was using the, you know, the Wi-Fi while she was in there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like a good excuse to sit there with about six cups of coffee <laughs> while you're using the internet. But I'm terrible when my internet is down, but with Zoe it's like losing her arm, you know. she <laughs> She's so gadget crazy. And having said that, Kelly's kids have messed up her uh, gadgets and Facebook and apps and that, so she's not able to watch anything at the minute. And uh, she's still got the headache, so get well soon, please, Kelly. I hope you get them sorted soon. Migraines and stuff like that are just dreadful. They're really dreadful. I suffered with them a lot when I was in my 30s, and they are very debilitating. Uh, luckily with mine, mine was chemically induced, it was when I was on the pill. And when I stopped taking that, they all went away. So, thank goodness, like, I didn't have to put up with them for long. I've had them since, um, but mostly when I've been actually on the computer. I suffer from what they call ocular migraine. In other words, my vision starts to go, I get little floaty things going zigzag, zigzag, bright colours the sides of my eyes and then I'll start seeing things double and you know and then I get the headache it's mostly to do with working on screens and things like that I used to get them all the time when I was working but I can't sit like some people would sit on the computer all day long or on the laptop all day long I can't do that I have to limit it uh, fortunately I can watch YouTube videos through my um, TV so I'm really glad about that because I don't get the um, migraines so much staring at TVs as I do looking at screens. Don't ask me what the difference is. I'm not technical. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go now. Some of you I will see at the weekend. Those of you who I don't see because you're in the US, uh, I'll try to do a video and try to introduce everybody to you. And if I don't do it, I'm sure that Zoe will. Because even though she hasn't got internet, she will <laughs> manage to find some Wi-Fi somewhere in Manchester. She's just like that. She's just such a genius. Um, so, I'm going to say bye. I'm going to, uh, make, well, I've got myself a coffee. I'm going to drink my coffee. And I think, first of all, I'm going to fringe one of the scarves that I've been trying to do for about the last four days. So, I'm going to do that first. So you have a nice weekend if I don't speak to you before. And uh, happy November the 5th if you're in the UK and you celebrate Bonfire Night. And just spare a thought for the little dogs and cats that are terrified. Try and keep them indoors if you've got any animals because you know what people are like with these big can, cannon like bangers and that. What happened to pretty fireworks? Why don't we still have those? Well, we do, but... Kids today seem to like to scare the living daylights out of everybody by lighting bangers. Right, for the fourth time, I'm going. And this time, I am going. So, oh, let me scoot a bit further near with the camera. Bye, all.